Hi, I'm Dr. Nan Boss. I want to talk to you today about a fairly recent problem that uh, is of great concern to veterinarians. That is heart failure that is associated to the food that a pet is eating. So diet related uh, dilatative cardiomyopathy, which is the most serious and deadly form of heart disease that we see in both people and dogs. So there are several different forms of dilatative cardiomyopathy. It's a very common form of heart disease in giant breeds and in some of the medium-sized breeds. The FDA has been receiving reports for the last several years about dilatative cardiomyopathy that is related to the food the pet is eating and that resolves once that food is changed. So we know there is something in a great number of pet foods that is leading to heart failure in dogs. The picture up at the top here is a normal heart, and this is a normal thickness of the muscle walls, and then these are the chambers where the blood collects and then is pumped either to the lungs or to the body. With dilated cardiomyopathy, these muscle walls become thin and stretched out, and the heart basically becomes large and flabby. So it doesn't have enough muscle anymore to pump blood effectively. And the enlargement means that that heart is stretched out and the valves that close each chamber off from each other become leaky because they are just physically pulled apart as the heart stretches and enlarges. And then blood starts backing up into the atrium instead of going through the ventricle and out into the aorta. The heart on the left is normal. It's a normal heart shape and a normal size. You can see the, the striations of the muscle tissue that's that muscular pump. This is a heart with dilatative cardiomyopathy. So it's a big flabby sac. You can no longer see the muscles and you can see how different this is from a normal heart. Most of the dogs that have been diagnosed with diet-related cardiomyopathy have been eating the diet that caused the problem for a year or more. Once diagnosed and the food is switched, we can save most of these dogs, but it's at least a year before we get the heart functioning normally, and that's a year with a lot of cardiology rechecks, uh, a lot of medications, and restricted uh, exercise. These dogs can't do very much. We don't yet know whether there's a toxin involved or a nutritional deficiency. The vast majority of diets reported to the FDA for causing heart failure have been grain-free. In the grain-free diets that we're seeing in association with cardiomyopathy, much of the grain has been replaced with tubers or legumes. Most pet food manufacturers simply put a bunch of ingredients together that add up to sufficient amount of nutrients on paper. But that doesn't guarantee that nutrition is still adequate in the finished product. So about 50% of the diets associated with heart failure in dogs are Akena, Zignature, or Taste of the Wild. But there are 13 other brands so far that have been identified as part of the cause of diet-related cardiomyopathy. There are probably many more out there. So what do we recommend you feed your dog? First, we want a diet manufactured in the company's own plant, not in a giant production facility that makes diets for dozens of different brands. Two, we want one formulated by a nutritionist. That means a PhD in animal nutrition or a veterinarian who is board certified in small animal nutrition. Three, we want ingredient testing before those ingredients go into the food for purity, for heavy metals, for fat and water content, for fiber balance, and a host of other things. Four, we want the company to perform and publish nutritional research. And five, if possible, we want feeding trials where the food is fed to live dogs or cats who are tested and monitored for things like heart disease and kidney failure. There are only four pet food companies that do all of this. Hills, the makers of Science Diet. Hills is also our most prescribed line of prescription diets that we use for specific diseases and problems. Purina, specifically ProPlan, which is their premium pet store line of foods, and their therapeutic diets, again, for specific diseases and problems. IAMS is good, specifically their Yukonuba pet store line, and Royal Canin, which makes breed-specific diets that are tailored to meet the needs of specific types of dogs, and whose therapeutic diets we also highly recommend and use every day. 
So we're really concerned about this problem. I wanna let you guys know what to watch for. If your pet has heart disease or heart failure, you will often notice coughing. That's because fluid is building up in the lungs and in the chest cavity because the blood isn't pumping properly. And then fluid can also back up into the liver and the abdomen. So you can see a distended abdomen. Sometimes liver values on blood testing are elevated. You're going to see a dog that tires quickly. Uh, they can have irregular heart rhythm and pass out or um, what we call syncope where they faint and fall to the ground. Uh, you will notice heavy breathing sometimes or a lot of panting. If you put your hand on the chest wall right behind the left elbow, you can actually feel the heart beating sometimes and you will find a, a high heart rate. Uh, how many breaths per minute is a really significant reading that we use to monitor heart disease. And if you count how many breaths per minute your dog is taking while it's sleeping or resting, that's a really valuable way for us to tell whether the uh, heart is in failure or not and whether the medications that we're giving are effective or not. So in summary, we want uh, to hear about it if your dog has any of these symptoms. We want to get all of our clients off of grain-free diets for their pets and put them on more normal old-school diets that are not associated with heart disease. Again, there's no nutritional benefit to grain-free diets anyway. Um, call us if you have any questions about this. Uh, you can find lots of information online. The FDA website has information. Um, and you can find veterinary sources as well. Look for data that's been collected by a veterinary school, not some random website. Uh, be careful not to get sucked into websites about uh, pet food theories. If it doesn't have an association with the Nutrition Alliance or a veterinary school, there's a good chance that this is not reliable information that you're reading. So be careful what you read, call us if you need us, and uh, we encourage you to get your dog or cat onto one of the diets that we recommend. Thanks.